Hey guys, Krista here from Davy and Krista. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to size your images appropriately for the web. I think this is the third, maybe the fourth iteration of this video I've done because technology keeps changing and there are different apps out there now than I have previously taught about to size your images. So lots of different ways to make your images web friendly. If you're not super familiar with adding your images to your website, one of my like biggest rules of thumb is that you should not upload high resolution images to your website. Those beautiful full resolution images that your photographer gave you or that you download from a stock photography site are often great for um, like print or desktop backgrounds or anything else that you would need it really big for. But for your website, if you upload those really big files, they might not work, number one. And number two, those big files are going to add a lot of load time to your site, which delays how quickly it loads for the end user, especially on something like a mobile device where speed and loading is critical. Um, and they also tell search engines that your website is slow, that it is bigger, and you might not rank as well because your website has those load issues. So really important that we make sure that our images are sized appropriately to help optimize our website. So in this video, I'm going to teach you three different ways that you can do this. In previous videos, I've also taught you Blogstomp, which is an older bit of software. Um, these days, it's now called Storyteller. And so I'm going to teach you how to use Storyteller because there's a way that you should do this. And then there's also a way that you should, I don't think, use Storyteller for your websites. Um, there's a way that you can do Storyteller that it injects the code for you and does the blog post layout. But I don't think that that's the best for um, like the future of your website. And I'll talk through why in a minute when I teach that. I'm also going to teach you how to use an editor called Be Funky. I'm going to teach you how to use Tiny JPEG, and those are kind of my go-tos for image editing software. You can also use Photoshop, and a different tutorial that I'll link below teaches you how to size your images with Photoshop. And then as a last resort, if you don't have access to any software, if you're on a Mac, there's a way that you can size your images down just by opening it up in preview. So I'll teach you that as well. Um, so first, I'm going to grab a few images. Uh, you can either grab images from like a gallery or maybe you have images. These are my brand photos from our um, wonderful brand photographers, Erica and John. And by default, with most galleries like this, if you're downloading images from a professional photographer, the files are going to be pretty large. So let's do these as full resolution um, just because I know that I can then teach you quite easily how to size them down for websites. If you are downloading them at the social media resolution, so if I look here, I can see it's also like called social media or maybe it would be listed as a web size. I still think it's worthwhile to size them down again because a lot of times those images are still a little bit too large for a website. Um, my general rule of thumb is that the long edge of your image, so if you're using a horizontal image, that would be like the wider part. If you're using a vertical image, that's like the tall part. That should be around 1400 pixels wide or long 1400 pixels um if you're gonna do a full background image so like something like this where the image spans the whole width of the page i think then you can get away with making them 2000 pixels wide um or yeah 2000 pixels wide um and it both of those if you're used to thinking about screen resolutions you want to aim for a 72 dpi you don't want that 300 dpi that's way too big for a website. It's only for print and you don't need that. So um, let me see. Let me grab a couple more images from Erica and John. So we'll grab this one. We'll grab this one of Davey. We'll grab this one of me going through brand stuff. The same thing is going to be true for most stock photography sites. So if I were to download this one from Pexels or this one from Pexels um, or this one, they're all going to come, come in as really big files. What I'm going to do then, um, and this is also true if you are a photographer who is exporting your images from Lightroom, even if you're optimizing them in Lightroom for the web, I still think it's worthwhile to go through a lot of the image compression that I'm going to show you now, because I've noticed that those like straight from Lightroom files still tend to be a heavy load on your website. So now that I have some images downloaded, I'm going to open up Storyteller, which is the newer version of Blogstop. And next I need to drag in some full resolution images. So these are going to be in my downloads. So let me find my downloads folder. I'm just going to grab my files and I'm going to drag them in right here. And if you're dragging in images, you want to make sure they're JPEGs. I don't believe that 
PNGs work with this image compression software of Storyteller. I know that previously Blogstomp did not let PNGs come in, so you have to make sure that those are JPEGs. Okay, so what we're seeing now is that it's taken these images and it's loaded them in and it's gonna try to auto arrange them in a blog post. I'm gonna unselect that because I don't want it to do this for me. I don't want it to be a collage. I want these images to be individuals or paired together, like two verticals together so that they're better for adding to Pinterest. Um, let's see, I don't, I want a little bit more margin, I think between my images and preview, and that actually doesn't matter. Right here, I can set whether I'm going to keep the original file name or if I want to change it. So if I was optimizing this for search engines, I might change it. Let's see, if I come here, I could do custom and we could do like Davy. Krista brand photos and title tags. If I want to customize the title tags, I can do that. I'm going to leave the original file name for now. Um, alt tags, it can do a random keyword pull. I actually don't think we're going to need this because we're going to download the files individually. We're not going to let blog stomp do the injection of code into our blog. And I don't like that option because it makes these posts only editable from Storyteller. So if you ever stop paying for Storyteller, you lose the ability to actually change your blog posts and the way that they look. It also makes it that these posts are tied into Storyteller. So if you have somebody helping you with SEO, if you have an admin who needs to go in and make a change or customize an image, all of that is locked in your Storyteller account and you don't have access to it. And even though they say that you can optimize all of these for search engines, I just think that doing it the more traditional way where you're uploading images one by one and adding alt text that way, even though it might technically be a tiny bit more work, I think that it creates um, stronger blog posts going forward. And I just don't love having that code coming in from a third party source. So my recommendation is not to let Storyteller do the code injection to download the blog posts individually. So let's see, I'm going to come into my settings and I'm going to change the sizes of my posts. General settings, I think these are from my actual um, like storyteller settings. So here's where I can change the sizing. So I can sort by the names, I can sort by how they come in. I'm gonna do my, um, I'm gonna switch this to collage and not do that blog. I can configure the sharpening. So if I want my blog posts to get a little bit sharper when they're exported, I can do that. So this will show me it sharpened. I think if you're sizing them down, sometimes it can be helpful to do that. So I'm going to click save on that. And then I don't need that. And I'm not going to have it log into my blog. So I don't need any of that. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to click off a blog and I'm going to go to Storyteller. Uh, I don't think I need to save that. And this is where I can adjust my styles. Okay. So this is a setting that I have. I think it's pulling in from my other blog stomp account where it's sizing them to be 1200 pixels wide, which is also totally, that's a good size too. I'm gonna teach you how to make this. So let's say that we want to add a style right here. We're gonna call this Krista 1300. I'm gonna set this image width to be 1300 pixels wide for about 1300. We could probably type this in if we want to make it perfect. So 1300, I don't like when my images have a border, but I want them to have some margin in between. So maybe something like 25 pixels. I don't need an inner stroke. I don't want an outer stroke. I am not going to, well, I'm going to get rid of this tab, which the tab is going to be this space down here at the bottom. So if you wanted to add a logo in there, you could, but I, I don't want that. So I'm going to remove that. I want my corners to be nice. I think JPEG quality is great at 95. I'm not adding in a logo. Um, so I don't need any of those settings. So let's hit okay. And now this is saved. So from here, I can start clicking on my images and I'm going to click on and make sure that this is selected here. And one thing that I can do is hit create. And that's just going to size this individual image down to be 1300 pixels wide. I can also click on oops, a couple of images at the same time. Like if I want to pair two verticals together, like these two, and I think if you're going to do this, do this version and not this tall version, but these two will automatically be paired together and then exported. If you want to change it up, how they're lay doing the layout, you can click on mix it up or you could, can you drag and select them? Yeah, you can drag and select them that way. If you wanted this image to be on the left, 
and this one on the right. So I can hit create. The other thing that I can do if I want to size a bunch of images at once and I don't need to do any of that pairing is to go over to batch and it's going to still, and you select all of them and you can click on your style and your settings right here and click on export and it'll do a batch export and all of them will end up in a folder on your desktop and they'll be sized and you can take those and start uploading to them to your website or to your blog. So if we come over to my desktop, we'll see my blog images are right here. And if I open this up so you can see the info, I'll make this a little bit smaller too so you can see all the info, we can see that the dimensions are now 1300 pixels wide and they're 1900 pixels long, which is totally fine. That's a good size too. Um, I can see that the size of this is now 766 kilobytes um, and these are getting better. These are more like prepared for my website. But another thing that I often do to really compress my images a bit more is to go to this site called Tiny JPEG. So from here, I can drop in my images and size them even more. So I'm going to take all of these images and drag them in at the same time. And it's going to run through a compression. And so these aren't big files to begin with. But this just takes them and it compresses them a little bit further. It's free software up to, I think, like 10 images at a time. I've noticed if you upload a ton of images at a time, it's going to start timing out. Um, but it's going to run through these images and then I can click on download all. So these are my downloads and let's compare this one. So this is 221 kilobytes with this one, which I think we had said it was 700 and 76 kilobytes um, and the quality of this one and this one are like, I can't even, I can't tell the difference. So I think that especially if you're on like a WordPress site and not a show it site and every little kilobyte matters um, in your page speed load time, um, I would definitely make sure that you're going through those two steps. So that's Storyteller and Tiny JPEG. And when I do those two steps, I'm getting images that are much smaller and load quickly on websites. Another tool that I found is an online tool. It's called The Funky. And I don't have a subscription to this, so I can't actually export them, but I can show you how it works still. So if we come over here to downloads and I grab these beautiful high resolution images from our photographers, Erica and John, I can drop them in and it's gonna start loading. And I can come over here to resize and work on the scale. So I can say that I want the longest side to be, let's say, 1200 pixels wide. And then I can hit apply. And it's going to make sure that this long edge of the vertical image and this wide image edge of the horizontal image are now 1400 pixels wide. I can add more images if I need to. I can save these. If I wanted to save them, I'd have to hit pay. Um, or if I was paying for this, I could hit export right here and all of the images would export and then I can then take them to my website. You might also double check to see how big those files are when this compresses them and consider running them through tiny JPEG just to make sure that they're not super big and they're as small as you need to, them to be. They also are kind of a photo editor and they have all sorts of different settings in here if you want to change your settings. Um, so like we could change our brightness, not looking too hot, but we could, we could increase our contrast. Um, and so if you don't have access to something like Photoshop, this could be an alternative that you could use. Another thing that we could do to size our images down is bring them into Canva. So let's come into Canva and let's create a design and I'm going to make this um, let's go with a random Pinterest size. So Pinterest pin, and I can bring in one of these images right here. I don't think that Canva is the best tool for sizing images because you're going to have to do everything individually. I think if you're adding a bunch of images at once, um, something like Storyteller or Be Funky is going to be best, especially if you're blogging. But if you only have to do an occasional image every once in a while, this could be another way to do it. So let's pull my image in and I'm going to click on share and download. And I'm going to switch this to be a JPEG. And you can see right here that the size right now is 1000 by 1500 pixels. If I wanted to make this a little bit smaller, I could change the size settings right here. I can also change the quality 
So I can bring it down to like a medium size and let's download this and then open it up. Okay, this is my file and it's 82 kilobytes in size. So it's not a big file at all. I probably wouldn't even need to run it through tiny JPEG. I am noticing that the quality is a little bit diminished. So um, let's see if I open up this, I open up this file in preview and then I open up one of the ones that is on my desktop. So let's go to blog images, this one, and we compare them next to each other. This one that Storyteller did is much sharper and more crisp than the one that Canva did. And I think that's because Canva's really, it's good for design. It's not so great for image editing and image compression and really optimizing the image quality. So if you just need a one-off um, export every once in a while and you need to get an image down for something specific, I think you could use Canva. Um, but if you're doing lots of images, I would opt for something like Storyteller. All right, last thing that we can do to try to size our images down a bit is to open it up in preview. And then from here, we can go into, and then from here, we're gonna go up to tools and adjust size. And you can see right now that this is 5,400 pixels wide, so that's pretty tall. I'm gonna change it to be 1,400 pixels wide, and I'm gonna change the resolution to be 72 pixels per inch instead of 300. I'm gonna leave these ones on, and I'm gonna see, and I can see right here that we're going from almost 300 kilobytes in size to 11.8 megabytes. So let's lower that, and then let's zoom in a bit. And you can see that it's not as big of a file as it was. I don't think that this is as crisp as, again, like something like Storyteller. That is um, one of the reasons why I really like using software like that. So let's open this up and you can kind of compare. Okay, so this is our file. And from here, we could also try running this through TinyJPEG. Let's refresh this page and see if it gives us any more additional compression. So we'll come over here to my... Davy and Krista number eight file and pull this in and it got it down about like 70%, which is pretty significant. So let's download that file and here's our file. So I sized it in preview and then I ran it through tiny JPEG to compress it even more. And then I can take this and upload it to my website and it'll be a significantly reduced file size from the original download. So if you guys have any questions about this, if there are other ways to resize images that you know of that I missed, comment below. Um, I'd love for other people to know about those resources. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because we are always releasing new content about short tutorials and optimizing your website and brand. Thanks guys.